guys. I want to start out today showing you my glitter jar. If you remember, some of you have seen this in my office before. Some of you have seen it on my website. I have a sample up on the website. Some of you may have already made some of your own at home. But today when you look at this glitter jar, I want you to think of it sort of as a model of our brain when we're kind of in an excited mode and a lot is going on or a lot is making us worry or get super agitated about something. And so when you look at that glitter jar, all of that glitter flying around is kind of like our brain when it's trying to process stress. And as you watch it, you'll notice at the top that it starts to settle out, starts to settle down to the bottom. And as it's settling, that's representing our mind as it calms down. Eventually, even when we're upset, all those bits of information flying around our brains start to flow in a clear direction. And some of them go to the part of our brain called the prefrontal cortex, which is for thoughtful decision making, when you can really be calm and think things through. So while it settles some more, can you think of a time when your brain was upset or you were stressed and information just was flying all around and you weren't sure which way was up or what to do. It's really stressful. But if we can find ways to calm ourselves down and let that information start to settle, our brains can think more clearly. So I'm gonna set this to side. I'm not gonna shake it again. I'm gonna gently settle it down, set it down so it can settle. And I'll show it again at the end. So you can see how it's all settled out. That's why I want us to get really good at learning how to make our brains calm down. That's why I'm always asking you to practice your deep breaths. So let's take a moment right now to settle ourselves. So I want everyone to get situated in your seats. If possible, put your feet flat on the floor. If you're sitting crisscross, that's fine too. Just get your legs as still as possible. Put your hands on your knees. If you're comfortable, close your eyes. If you're not comfortable closing your eyes, then I want you to find something you can focus your eyes on. It might be your hands. You can look down at your hands. You could look down at your feet. Or you could find a point on the wall that you can look ahead to or maybe a picture that you love looking at. So I want you to find that point. I'm going to be looking at you while I talk, but I want you to find a point or close your eyes. Now I want you to very slowly take a breath in through your nose, and I'm going to count to five and see if you can be that slow before your lungs fill up. I'm going to count to five using my hand. If your eyes are open, you can watch me do this but we want to take in our breath through our nose really slowly. Hold it. Now out. In through your nose, out through your mouth. One more time. Nicely done. When you're starting to get agitated, force yourself to get still. Take in those slow deep breaths. Do two or three of those and see if that's enough. You can also try counting to ten very slowly. It gives your brain something to concentrate on instead of what you might be worried about. So let's talk about three main parts of our brain that help us if we use them the right way. And that's why I want you to get good at these tricks. If we're not using them the right way, we use those calming down tricks so that we can let our brain work the right way. So I want everyone to point to their forehead and say prefrontal cortex. One more time, prefrontal cortex. So that prefrontal cortex in the front of your brain is kind of like your wise leader, the wise owl. 
who's perched up there ready to make smart decisions, smart choices. If we made a model with our hands of our brain, take two fists and put them together, and these thumbs are together, see my thumbs? That is your prefrontal cortex, so right here in the front. Now I want us to point to our amygdala. So everybody point right behind your ear and repeat after me, amygdala, amygdala. Good job. When we make a model with our hands, put your fists back together like this. The pointer fingers are kind of buried in there, right behind that same area, right behind your, uh, right behind your ear. That's the amygdala. Your amygdala is your security guard. It's kind of like the barking dog. When something is scary or something seems to be dangerous, your amygdala kind of wakes you up and you either fight, flee, or freeze, right? Because you're not sure what to do. So your amygdala is your security guard. It's there to kind of protect you when there's danger. The third part of the brain I want to talk about is your hippocampus. So you pointed right behind your ear, move your finger back just a little bit, that's your hippocampus buried in there. Let's make the model with our hands again. Put your fists together. Remember your pointer fingers were buried right there, but right behind them you have your ring finger and your middle finger. So they're buried in there and that's about where your hippocampus would be. Your hippocampus is kind of like your filing cabinet. It's your saver of memories and information, and you access it when you need it. Now your amygdala sometimes is working overtime, so if you start to notice that your amygdala is constantly making you panic and run for cover, and maybe it's a situation that wasn't really dangerous, then your amygdala is starting to become a hindrance to you staying calm. So yes, there might be times that you are in danger and your amygdala does its job and you run for cover. But if it's a thunderstorm outside and you aren't in danger, you're inside and you're safe and dry and warm, but you hear that thunder and your amygdala makes you run for cover, it's not giving your brain a chance to think it through sometimes. So you got to get calm. You got to access your information in your hippocampus and think, you know what, the last time there was a thunderstorm, it was a little scary, but I was fine. And then your prefrontal cortex can make smart decisions about find a dry place, make sure you're safe, but don't panic. It's all going to be okay. So that's when you work through, okay? Those are the parts of our brain that we want to get really good at using and accessing the right way. If you notice that your amygdala is constantly making you on alert, then we need to start finding some tricks that work for you to train that amygdala what's really dangerous and what's not and how can we handle this situation and get calm so that our prefrontal cortex can make those smart decisions, our wise owl. So one more time with our model of the brain. We have our wise owl up front, our prefrontal cortex right up front. That wise owl is perched up there, ready to help you make wise, smart decisions. But then something scary comes along and your barking dog, that amygdala, starts making you run for cover and be scared or react or fight. If the barking dog isn't appropriate right now, your wise owl has flown away, we need to access our hippocampus to get calm, find those tricks, remember what happened last time when we were able to be safe. That way we get calm enough, our amygdala calms down and the dog quiets down, our wise owl flies back into place, and then we can make our smart decisions on what to do next. So I want us to get really good at practicing those things. We'll refer to this in some other lessons too, but I hope you enjoyed that quick model of our brain and those three parts that work together so well. Now I have a song for you guys. So I think you'll like this song. It goes to the tune of My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean. My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean. So hopefully that sounds familiar to you. I'm going to sing it once through and show you the words. And then I'll sing it a second time through and hopefully we can join together. My brain is so very important. 
It helps me do most everything located here in my head. It's why I can think, choose, and sing. My brain, my brain, it is so important to me, to me. My brain, my brain, it is so important to me. My brain, it helps me think and remember. My brain tells me fight, flee, or freeze. It helps all my parts work together. And that's why I just have to say, my brain, my brain, it is so important to me, to me. My brain, my brain, it is so important to me. Now together. My brain is so very important. It helps me do most everything located here in my head. It's why I can think, choose, and sing. My brain, my brain, it is so important to me, to me. My brain, my brain, it is so important to me. My brain, it helps me think and remember. My brain tells me fight, flee, or freeze. It helps all my parts work together. And that's why I just have to say, my brain, my brain, it is so important to me, to me. My brain, my brain, it is so important to me. That was a fun song, wasn't it? I hope you enjoyed it. You can always rewind and sing it again. But I think that's a fun way to remember what our brains are for. And we use our brains every day, all the time. We're always making decisions. What to eat for breakfast, what to wear today, What's the weather like so we know what to wear today? What did I wear the last time it was cold? Access that hippocampus and think it through. Use your prefrontal cortex to make wise decisions. We are always wanting to exercise and keep our bodies healthy. We need to do the same thing for our brains. And that's why you're coming to school, to learn and grow your brain power. This is just one more way to grow that brain power so that you can feel better and feel healthier, not just in your stomach and your heart, but also in your mind. So let's get really good at practicing using those parts of our brain so that we can make those wise choices with our prefrontal cortex and control that barking dog. He's there to help us when we really need him, but let's make sure he doesn't get out of hand when we don't really need him in that moment. Okay, like I promised, here's the jar. Look, when we learn how to keep our brains calm, even when something starts to stir us up, we can get calm again and then we can use our brains to make smart, wise choices. I hope you're able to practice some of this through the week. I hope you get better and better and stronger and stronger, and I hope you have a fabulous week. Thank you, guys.